Hi, Mikhail Sekras here, Professor of Medicine and Chief of the Division of Hematology at the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, University of Miami. Welcome to part four of the CE certified TikToktivity series on myelodysplastic syndromes from MLI. If you haven't already, please check out the other videos in this series. While a substantial number of patients with lower risk MDS may have mild or asymptomatic anemia that requires watchful observation, some require treatment to manage the disease. So let's talk about them. In the first video of this series, Dr. Janija spoke a bit about the burden that ESAs can have on a patient's quality of life. Let's talk a bit more about ESAs given they've been the standard of care for patients with anemia and lower risk MDS for decades. An ESA regimen should be started with a treatment goal of maintaining hemoglobin levels that are sufficient to avoid red cell transfusions and maintain quality of life, typically at hemoglobin levels at or above 8, since we often start initiating transfusions for hemoglobins of less than 8. In a meta-analysis we conducted looking at 20 years of published literature on ESA use in MDS, the hematologic improvement rate to ESAs was about 40%, and in another study, they lasted for about 12 to 18 months. The NCCN guidelines do support use of an ESA for the upfront treatment of patients with lower risk MDS with low baseline EPO levels, especially if they haven't yet needed red blood cell transfusions. You can find all this information in the notes. What option do you have if your patient has the deletion 5Q karyotypic abnormality? Well, lenalidomide, of course. Lenalidomide may be used as first or second line therapy for patients with lower risk MDS and deletion 5Q and who are transfusion dependent or a second line therapy after ESA failure. Results from the phase three MDS 003 trial that examines lenalidomide versus placebo showed that more patients who received 10 milligrams and even five milligrams once daily achieved red blood cell transfusion independence, which was the primary study endpoint lasting eight weeks or longer versus placebo. A study we conducted showed that if you start high with a 10 milligram dose for one to two cycles and then reduce that dose, patients stay on lenalidomide for longer and may even live longer. What can we offer patients who don't have the deletion 5Q, lower risk MDS, or who don't respond well to ESAs? This is where loose powder step comes in. In a, the first study conducted in patients with lower risk MDS who had ring sideroblasts and were already exposed to ESAs or unlikely to respond to them, Results from the Metalist Phase 3 trial showed that 38% of patients who received loose powder sept met the primary endpoint of transfusion independence for eight weeks or longer compared to placebo, which was 13%. What if you want to use loose powder sept earlier in a patient's disease course? Well, loose powder sept was also studied here and compared to ESAs and almost doubled the response rate at 60% versus 30%. It's important to remember that most of these responses were seen in patients who had ring sideroblasts. Dosing decisions for all these drugs must be considered when patients experience adverse events such as neutropenia or thrombocytopenia, in which case dosing may need to be decreased or even interrupted. We just covered a lot of content, so thanks for listening and check out the link to access full manuscripts of the trials discussed here. We'll ask Dr. Dean to take us over the finish line with the last video of this series. Just click the tag in my caption. And before you move on to get credit for this activity, don't forget to answer the questions on the link below. Thanks for watching.